Hey everyone, welcome to the Latch Mama podcast. It's Lindy today. Melissa is out spending some time with her family and I'm here with Corey today and we are celebrating NICU Awareness Month. So we're going to chat a little bit about personal stories, but if you've never joined us, um, this is a podcast for any mother parent in the trenches with kiddos. You're listening to Latch Mama podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Wirt, busy mom of six and owner of latchmama.com. Join us each week as we talk about pregnancy, breastfeeding, postpartum, and all things motherhood. So welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good week? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's busy, I'm sure. I mean, it's Monday. My, <gasps> it is Monday. my kids are almost all in school. Not all of them, but like three out of four. Yeah. So almost. Wait, how much longer till it's four? Lucy starts preschool tomorrow. Okay. And then I've got like two more years yeah, for yeah. Reese. Reese is my NICU baby. But so pre- preschool is fun and all that. Yeah. So. Okay, we're going to dive into all kinds of NICU stuff. Yeah. And we're going to speak more on our personal stories. So neither one of us is a medical professional. We can't really speak to specific do's and don'ts within the hospital settings or wherever right. you are located with a little one. Um, but we're going to chat, yeah, a little bit more from personal perspective. The goods, the bads. Yeah, how what we struggled, what works, what maybe, oh, I wish I did this or I wish I did that. Yeah. So... Yeah, tell me a little bit about yours. When um, you guys started. So I have always had, well, three out of four of my babies at a big, big hospital that I knew had a great NICU, not for any specific reason. I just like that hospital. Right. But I guess I lucked out um, because when I delivered Reese last summer, um, she just turned one and I'm like really That's emotional insane. about it. <laughs> oh but God. when I delivered Reese last summer, she came three weeks early, um, which normally is not a huge like NICU risk. Mm-hmm. A lot of three-week early babies are perfectly fine, Um, but I had COVID at the time, and it was really, really bad and really, really scary, and during delivery, at some point, she lost oxygen for like three minutes. Um, She had to be resuscitated. They put her on a CPAP. It was was scary, and I had to give birth alone, and... I feel like COVID's like a whole nother... That could be a whole nother topic, right? It could totally be another podcast. Like birth and COVID, yeah. But like, just her details... Mm -hmm. um, she was diagnosed with uh, HIE, which is like a brain issue. She had a small brain bleed, things that she immediately needed to be rushed to the NICU. So, um, okay. and being COVID positive, I wasn't allowed to see her for five days. Oh so my So being separated from your baby and like having NICU time and a lot of moms have to go home. I had to go home and leave my baby in the hospital. That is just the saddest, scariest thing in the whole wide world. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Yeah, I was trying to picture you kind of there. Like you don't have your baby with you. No. And like, what was going on through your head? How long did you stay before you had to go home being um, sick? Well, I was well, super, right? super sick. And um, they took me to ICU and they took her to the NICU. And so I was in ICU for like three days. And then they put me in regular care and sent mm-hmm. me home. So like four days total, which was great. Not too long of a yeah. stay. Um, but she was in the NICU for a full week and a day, I think it might've been eight days. Yeah. Okay. And for five of those, I was still testing COVID positive, so I could not see her. Like you can't go in the NICU with COVID. Right. So, yeah. So where, like, I know you're a nursing mama, so you're sitting there and you don't have your baby and you want to just snuggle, whatever. Right. Where does your brain go? Like, <laughs> I mean, cause I, <laughs> I'm trying to think back to mine I can share mine in a little bit, but you're like. I need I need that. Yes, I need I, that to do what to, I want I to do. I can't do that without yes. the baby. So <laughs> what am I going to do? Um, you know, what do the next few days look like? What all of these thoughts, right, that go through your mind? It was a lot. It was and I'm not a big pumper. I never have been. Mm-hmm. Like this is my fourth baby and I could probably like I pumped a lot with my first because I thought you had to. And then by the time I got to baby number four, yeah. I'm like, mm, I'll just keep a pump around the house. But I don't. Yeah. I wasn't planning on using it. And right. so after delivery, my husband, like he brought all of my things to the hospital for mm-hmm. me because I wasn't planning on having a baby that day. And I had to send him back home for a second time because I needed a better pump. I was like, you're yeah. going to have to go to what Target. Did you do? Like, what did you I have? Really, all I had was a hand pump, like a little oh, okay. manual. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I had to pump like they tell you every two to three hours, but yeah. you're over here like where my, my baby is separated from me and I need this milk now. Mm-hmm. So I was pumping like every hour and a half. I was yeah. not getting any rest. I was miserable. 
just it's a lot it's so heavy being yeah. separated from your baby like that and I also look back on it you know when you have that little newborn for like the first couple of days like whether you're in the hospital whether you're at home wherever you have chosen to give birth I mean they're not nursing every two to no. three hours so like I do look back and it's like you know they kind of throw that information at you and I was like okay I'll just meow yeah, make sure I pump kind of every two hours but those little ones they don't they work so hard to bring that milk in right and they're not just hopping on every no two hours sometimes they're on every 30 so, minutes yeah exactly so I wonder whenever I do look back oh what what would I would have done different now that I do have the knowledge right and really how could I have gotten that knowledge back then um, I definitely the support I think about it and I'm like I really should have let myself sleep wow I should mm. have like if they told me every two to three hours granted I was a CLC at the time too so I'm yeah like, I know better don't tell me what to do yeah 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 but <laughs> I definitely should have like pumped like longer and really like massaged the breast and like yep. worked on it so that I could rest in between I should have given myself a little slack and I didn't because I'm like I want to get my baby home I want to feed her I want her now yeah, yeah. This is, it's a lot of feelings so after that, like, how long was she there? I'm assuming you went home. What did that I look did. like now? Because I don't have the experience that you did. You had, you had kids at home. I did. I had three kids at home. I, my so hus- what my did husband, that look like? My husband sent me a video. It was really funny. Um, he sent me a video of like him calling the kids into the kitchen. And it was, he was like, guys, mom's going to have a baby today. And like that, I, it's one yeah. of my favorite little treasured things I have Aww. in my phone always. Um, but I mean, he had to stay home with our kids. Thankfully he was able to take, you know, FMLA, which of course is unpaid, but yeah, he, he had to stay home with the kids. So I was in the hospital alone the entire time. And then I had to, he would come to the hospital and spend time with the baby when he could get a sitter cause he didn't have COVID. Oh so he, this is fu- a fun thing for him to tell people is that he got to meet her first because he did. Yeah. I didn't get to see her because you were sick. Yeah. So. so when were you able to go? I finally got to meet her. Um, There was a lot of back and forth in the hospital because Mm -hmm. the CDC and um, like various agencies and stuff, they do say that COVID positive moms and babies should be kept together. Right. But they also can't let COVID positive moms in the NICU. And that was the big problem was that I can't go in there and be around other people's kids. So what did did you have to have a negative test or something? I'd have a negative test, which I finally got it like... um, Five days postpartum. Okay. Five, yeah. Five days postpartum. So I went in there at like 8 p.m. when I finally got that negative as soon test. As, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, stayed overnight and slept on the horrible couch with a fresh C section scar and <gasps> tried to breastfeed her as often as she would breastfeed. But, you know, when you have a NICU baby and they've been through, you know, they've been through birth, which is hard as it is, mm-hmm. but now they're being poked and prodded mm-hmm. and tested and moved and all these things, those poor little babies are kaput. They're yeah. exhausted. Yeah. So like getting them to breastfeed is like you can't. Yeah, d- yeah you're not just to dealing water. with like just um, little sleepy newborns. No. It is like, and I remember that, and I struggled with that, understanding that, and accepting that. Right. Um, from like a spinal tap test or whatever yes. that they were, they had that medicine to relax and whatnot, and he was just he was not he having was it. Mm-hmm. And then you you think it's you, you you know what am I doing wrong? Why can't I make this work? And um, God, it was awful. It's it's it, you feel so sad because you're like, what can I do to make it better? And you can't. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to you have to trust the process, mm-hmm. which is really hard when it's mm-hmm. your brand new baby. I don't want to trust anybody else with my brand new baby. It's mm-hmm. mine. Give it to me. Right. <laughs> So mine, it was my first. So yes. I had no. Uh, no what an introduction yeah. to motherhood. Yep. So it was the first, and um, I think it was a little. It was a little seizure due to a brain bleed from birth. Okay. So he's fine. We never had any issues. But yeah, I, I w- actually had just taken a shower, and I was walking down the hall to go and get baby from the NICU, Aww. and the nurse met me in the hallway, and that's where I was like, you know, and yeah. Thankfully, I, I think it all worked out well, but it was. Um, it wasn't just a pediatrician on staff. It was a, what is the thing? Like a neurologist? Pedi- pediatric or? neurologist yes. on staff. Um, and she's like, I'm just not comfortable. Let's just get, go get, you know, yeah, everything looked out, whatever. So he was whisked off to CHKD because I was in, oh, um, in a different Chesapeake. Building? Different hospital. Wow. Different hospital. Oh. So I'm walking down the hall thinking I'm going to take my baby home. Nope. And I'm not. He's leaving he's leaving and um 
you know, I thought we were doing pretty well with nursing, but now all of a sudden, like, like I don't have my baby anymore. What do I do? And I did oh. not have a pump. And so I actually rented one of the hospital ones. Cause yeah. I had no idea. Um, oh. And so off we went over there, but just speaking to trying to nurse in there, yeah. um, there were two or three just sweet little ones that just screamed their head off. And this rickety old kind of broken rocking chair Ugh. with no pillows and no nothing yeah. that has to fit in between these two kind of bassinets the, yep, with cords and everything and a sleeping baby. And I don't know what to do and I don't know what to expect. And I did have, I don't know if she was an IBCLC or a CLC, but mm -hmm. I had a bit of help, but I didn't, I didn't get this information no. that I know now. And I was stressed and worried and overwhelmed and I had so much engorgement that I did not know what to do Ouch. with. And I could not get milk out because it was so swollen. But I just kept pumping because there's milk there and it's supposed to come out. Yeah. And that, you know, <laughs> like no, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be I'm doing. Like, I'm really, really trying. But like I'm about to like break down. Yeah. Because he's so sleepy. Like my nipples are probably the size of like a golf ball. Like right. it can't fit in his mouth. And, and they're little. Of course he's like yeah. this nine pound baby in the NICU. Like it should work. It should work. What's wrong with me? This is where my brain was going. The feelings. And so all the feelings. I just was like, I can't, I can't do this. And where I probably could if I had the support, but I didn't. And so yep. I just, I was like, okay. I was like, I can just focus on pumping. I can get the milk out yes. and get him the milk and I can bring it because obviously I couldn't show up and I couldn't be there. Right for all of that time to do that. So, anyway. you ended so up that's pumping? kind of how I ended up exclusively pumping okay. for him. And I pumped, I think for about seven, six, seven months, but I had milk for a year. That's so so that's what nobody really educated me on pumping. Right. You just kind of had to figure it out as you went. <laughs> Nobody told me, you know, babies might nurse for 20, 30 minutes at the beginning. And as they get older, they might nurse for maybe five to seven minutes right, because they get they're really more efficient. Well, nobody tells me this. No. So, you know, I'm four months in pumping like 20 to 25 oh, ounces gosh. every two and Your a half hours. <laughs> it was terrible. But I just looked at it. I was like, well, I just I just froze it. I just froze right. it. And so I had milk for a year. But but once again, it took me about three months to wow. wean, wean off that pump. Right. Um. It's so just all those kinds of things. It's it just, just kind it's of piles up really really quickly. I know mm -hmm. you said the that it, it's funny. You gave me like a flash memory. You said the rickety rocking chairs, and I'm like, I think I will forever remember the feeling of the horrible NICU chair I sat in. Mm -hmm. And like I took the pillows they gave me that were supposed to be for like the little cot for me to sleep mm -hmm. on, and I just put them in the chair under my butt because my mm -hmm. butt hurt so bad yeah. trying to sit. And breastfeed this baby that won't wake up. She won't stay yeah. awake. She's been poked and prodded and, and she's exhausted. I know. And uh, I wish I could like gift them mine. It's just like sitting there that has like nice cushions. I, I think everyone needs a recliner. Yeah. And I'm like, every NICU needs that. I mean, really good it's chairs. Still, there's all these things that you can't do anything about, you know, in the room, the noises and the lights yeah. and the sounds and the crying. You can't do anything about that. But I do think a little bit more comfortable of a place to try right. to attempt probably would have gone a, a, yeah, a long way for something for a mom like that. But I, well, I was able to like, I still feel very, very blessed that it worked out because she was three weeks early. Mm -hmm. my, my baby ended up with some pretty significant brain Thankfully, they're no longer problems, but mm -hmm. at the time were very scary problems. Mm -hmm. And so I was pretty convinced she was not going to breastfeed. And she luckily latched the first time I tried to get her to latch. And I still feel like, wow, I can't believe that worked out. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have to exclusively pump. I only had to pump for the time that she was really in the NICU. And I did also rely on donor milk while I was trying to get my milk to come in those mm -hmm. first like five or so days I was away from her. I, you know, was pumping a ridiculous amount and not letting myself yeah. rest and not taking breaks and getting these little, like, teeny little milliliters of milk. Yeah. And then my husband would come and bring it to the baby. And yeah, they asked if they could give her donor milk. Always take advantage if they will. See, that's <laughs> where I, milk. I mean, I was literally at CHKD. Right? And nobody. They're a donor bank. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ugh. Nobody offered. Nobody said anything. So there's so many things when I look back how much that would have like taken some pressure off right. me and just said, mama, like it is okay. Like this is what you're dealing with. Like you keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing, right. but take a deep breath like and your don't baby freak will get out fed. about it. Right. Don't keep throwing that pump on. Like let's work other ways to like get, 
you know, let's relieve this engorgement so the milk can come out like you're making it. There's right. nothing wrong with you, but we do have this available. Right. Like, don't freak out. You don't, if you can't rush up here, like we have something, like I wish that was communicated to me or I was educated enough to ask those questions, right. which I wasn't. No. Um, so, yeah, I think so much just comes back to education on what you can and can't ask for. An yeah. IBCLC, you know, support. What can I can't? What can I do? Can I do this at the hospital? Can I come? Yeah. How frequently? This is what I'd like to do. Mm-hmm. You know, being more open and confident in sharing what you want. But back then, I just, I just wasn't educated. No, I mean, I about feel like, it. I feel like I want to tell people, okay, here's what you can do. Here's what you can't. But you can't because mm-hmm. every hospital is different. Yep. Every baby's different. Like mm-hmm. your, your baby had a seizure. My baby mm-hmm. is had also had a brain bleed, but like. Yeah. She had to be cooled because of the type of brain damage that she had. So she couldn't be touched for three days. Like there's. See, I think that's as well as finding yeah. out, hey, this is this is as a parent, as a mother, as a breastfeeding mom or whatever you're choosing to do. This is this is my plan. This is what I would like to do. What are. How can we make it happen? How can we make this happen? Yeah. What are we looking at? You know, on baby's side. When are these. When can these things be done? You know, right. all those kinds of questions. But just being confident in what you want to do and sharing that with those nurses and and doctors, because I think they're incredible. Yeah. They're Um, there to help you too. They're not just for the baby. Like they want to get that baby out and home with you. Yes. But you have to like, you have to ask them those questions because they don't know. They don't know what's on your mind. They might think, okay, well, we're, we're trying to take care of this baby Mm -hmm. 24 hours a day and that mom's got other kids at home. Maybe she's not trying to breastfeed. Like you, you have to tell them what you want and ask, how can you help me make this happen? Yeah. And then I also think it's having that open mind that yeah. a plan can change, whether yes. it's birth, whether it's breastfeeding, whether yeah. it's pump, whatever that plan is, those answers that you get back might not be exactly <laughs> right. what you want, <laughs> or you might not be able to get in there as yeah. often as you want. Compromise. And just as hard as it sounds is to just take a deep breath and... You know, if you are planning to nurse and planning to pump, just keep that milk coming out. Right. If it's coming out, you're going to make more. Yes. It's going going to be there. And whenever you can snuggle and be with baby more, you just keep working on that. I think. And like day by day and week by week, depending on how long you were there. That feeling of like, I need to be there with my baby all the Mm -hmm. time. That is so overwhelming. I feel like for all NICU parents, like. Mm-hmm. You want to be in that. And especially when they send you home as a mom yeah. and your baby has to stay, it's heartbreaking and you feel mm-hmm. guilty and you feel devastated. And then you're like, I don't have the energy to pump. I just gave birth. I'm hurting. I'm healing. Mm-hmm. I'm away from my baby. How do I make that milk that I'm not doing from skin to skin and latching mm-hmm. and stuff? So I, I I would love to figure out how to tell people like, don't feel guilty. But I know it's I felt it's, it too. It's so hard and it's so easy to say, oh, I wish I had, you know, just... It's okay that I go home and it's okay for an hour that I just take care of myself. Right. And take a shower. Because mothers, like, we're just not, no. you know, we're not, we're not, I think, selfish. Like, no, in nature. We're not like, when you have a baby, like, it's not, it's not about you anymore. No. But I do, when they say, please, like, go take care of you. Yes. Go take a break, take a shower, relax, and come back. It is, it's, it, it's the right, it's I the think right it's thing the to do. right yes. thing to do is go take care of yourself so you can come back and be a hundred percent there. Yeah. Um, and then also like, I didn't have kids at home. Right. So that was your first. It was just me, that baby and my husband. Right. And you know, he was working and he would come after work oh. and I would kind of come, I would come for the morning. Right. And then I think I would go grab some lunch and I would come, but I would literally like hang there all day. Right. Um, but I could because I didn't have anybody else at home. Right. But I think with other kids, you do. I think you kind of have to look that everybody is loved. Like that little baby in there is loved so much. I am so loved so much. My kids yes. and everybody, as hard as it is to kind of share out that like it feels love impossible. and attention, yeah. which is awful, you know, but but I think it's really, really good to try to do that. Yeah. And like, make sure you're, you know, taking care of each little aspect. Depending on how long. Yeah. Depending on how long your baby's in the NICU too. Like some people have to go back to work. Mm-hmm. Like some people, yeah. they don't have childcare. Like my husband was lucky enough to get um, FMLA so he could stay with yeah. our kids. But also 
he had to take some to school and he also had to do a little bit of work from home and he needed, you know, an hour to himself to do that so he could stay home with them. So I had to come home from the NICU and I yeah. remember feeling like I had to spend the night because they offered it, even though my baby was asleep the whole time. <laughs> like I could have right. gone home and not slept on that horrible couch and been in pain after a fresh C-section, but I felt like I had to be there. Right. I just, yeah, I think it's it's really hard, but you have to remind yourself that like, it's okay to not be there the entire time they're there. They right. are very well taken care of. Right. And I think as well, for them to do the best job they can, those nurses and the doctors, it's they also need that time where yeah. it's not so busy, it's not so crazy for them to be able to focus 100% right. on those little ones as well. So, you know, and then I think little ones, they need that rest too. Although you just want to snuggle and rest. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. Um, I was trying to think what else. Well, this is one question we probably haven't touched on at all. is how to help a friend whose baby is in the NICU. Uh, my first suggestion and pretty much my only suggestion anytime NICU or not NICU when someone has a baby is food delivery. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Melissa did this for me when I had a baby in the NICU, but she sent me like a DoorDash gift card. Yeah. And it fed me the whole week I was there. Like it was the gift I did not know that I needed. Mm -hmm. And it saved me because there was a Panera in the hospital mm -hmm. and I could just order, walk downstairs, pick it up and then eat like in the NICU lounge. Yeah. And I was fed so I could keep pumping and, and feeding my baby. That's awesome. Because you forget. You mm -hmm. really do. You're in there all day long. You're like waiting on pins and needles for your baby to wake up so you can feed them or yep. so you time to pump again or mm -hmm. the baby's taking a nap maybe I should close my eyes for a minute it's yeah. feed yourself so if you have a friend with a baby in the NICU I always always recommend food yeah I think that's a fantastic one and then I knew someone like there was a Wawa right by their house mm -hmm. so I think with the app like you can gift Ooh. um so like gas money yes. um because I mean your baby could be anywhere depending yeah. on depending on its needs correct and also I think um I had a friend who was able to utilize like the Ronald McDonald house but like sometimes oh, like okay. hotel money like things like that so yeah like food gas money yeah um Ooh, daycare anything like that or yeah yeah like a sitter mm -hmm. or helping if there's any like, other hey, I'll kids watch your at kids home while you absolutely. go back up there yes love that absolutely I think that's a great all those are fantastic I'll offer ideas. to I'll have to help out with the older ones because they still have needs even though you yeah. know you're hyper focused on that baby I I don't think I thought about my other kids yeah. very much and I I look back and there's so much yeah guilt and sadness and it's it's hard to overcome but you also you make the best decisions you can in that situation. Right. And I do think looking back, like when I was pumping so much, I didn't know of any needs like locally. But if I did and I had the education and someone needed extra milk, like yeah. I had extra milk, like Aww. that would have, you know, mm -hmm. if I had thought about that, but I was probably so deep in my <laughs> yeah <laughs> little like First crazy baby world. Yes. Um, but I'm sure there are local mamas if there is no milk bank, like really close or something like that, that you could find some help if you Absolutely. needed it and if you wanted it. Yeah. You know? So, all right. I'm trying to think of anything else. Did we touch on most of it? I think. I think so. I mean, I, I, like we did. What questions can you ask? I think it's just being confident in your plan. Yeah. Knowing what that you would you, like to do. You should ask everything. Mm -hmm. You can you can ask everything. You just mm -hmm. have to be prepared that the answer to some or a lot of it might be no. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to hold my baby so badly yeah. and she was like mid EKG. They were like, listen, give us until the morning. Mm -hmm. Let's finish these tests. You come back. You've rested. Then you can hold her as right. much as you want. Yep. And being patient is impossible and very painful. <laughs> but sometimes you just let them do what yeah. they got to do so you can get your baby home. Yep. Agree. Totally agree. Um... Let's do this one. How to bond with your baby. I don't know if we hit too much on that. We j you just want to hold them, right? You really, yeah. You just want to snuggle. But I'm trying to think if there's any other ways. Um, it depends on your hospital. I know I kind of got lucky. I Like I said, I gave birth at a big hospital, big teaching hospital. They're mm -hmm. very advanced. Um, but they offered for me to FaceTime with her at any point. So I oh, FaceTimed wow. with, they have like an iPad in the NICU. Yeah. And so parents call in. And you can, they'll take it right to your room, set it up in front of your baby, mm -hmm. talk to your baby. So I have like a lot of iPad screenshots from when I wasn't allowed to be with her or I had to be home with my kids or I was pumping or whatever. Yeah. And I just wanted that like rush of oxytocin. Mm -hmm. So ask them like, hey, yeah. can I, does even a nurse would probably say yes. Like they just, they right. want you to help 
take care of your baby. So, right. hey, can I FaceTime with my baby? Can I call? Who can I call to check up on them? Like, see mm-hmm. what they've been up to, how they're doing, how much milk are they drinking? Like, all of those yep. things. No, I think that's great. Um, that helped me bond, at least. If I was there and there was like, and this sounds so simple because you would do it at home, right? But if, if I was there and there was a diaper that needed to be changed, they always offered. Yes. You know, would you like to do this? And um, so that was kind of, I know it sounds so simple, but um, if you are there, letting, no, it them, helps. letting them know that, hey, I'm just going to be sitting outside. If, right. You know, little if things. If there's a diaper, just those little things that you can do. I was also allowed, and it might depend on the situation, I was able to bring in like his little blankie yes. that they used as like a like a little pad cover. Mm-hmm. So it just made it a little bit more personal and I felt a little bit more connected in that way, you know, if I wasn't there and whatnot. Mine, so. um, the nurses in the NICU, I guess somebody made these and they, you know, like some people knit hats for the NICU kids and stuff like that. Somebody had made little fabric hearts um, that would go Aww. in the bassinets with the baby and she was like, listen, while you're here, keep it in your shirt and then when you leave we'll leave it with baby and oh my so gosh that's your, the cutest oh, no. idea <laughs> so like I, if they don't offer that at your hospital <gasps> highly recommend like a little like a swaddle uh, blanket or yeah. a little so stuffy or something like you. yes so i still have that in her like baby book is this little pink heart that someone knitted or, or stitched or something and donated them to the NICU but I would keep it in my bra and I yes. would like sit and feed her or snuggle her or just you know hang out in the NICU and then when I left I'd leave it and they'd put it in her bassinet so it smelled like me oh my gosh which so is cute. just super sweet oh, that like little teeny too, things yeah. you can do but they definitely help bond yeah 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 we hit on some breastfeeding a baby in the ICU um the feelings, fear, guilt, and all that kind of stuff. And we focused on I think friends. they're, yeah, kind of unavoidable, those feelings. Yeah. And they're okay. They're okay. And all of those feelings are, you can be mad. Like, I was yep. so mad. I, I, I vividly remember typing a very angry letter to, like, the doctor who wouldn't let me in. Because I was COVID positive. Like, obviously, I'm not thinking, right? Mm-hmm. I, was, I can't go in the NICU. But right. give me my baby. I was yeah. mad. So yeah. it's okay to have those feelings. Yeah. Communicate with your partner. Find that support. Yeah. Get it out. <sighs> know that it's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah. Lots of deep breaths. It's it's going to be difficult. Yeah. And just, you know, prepare yourself. Yeah. Compromise yeah. where you can and help your team help get your baby home. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's great. We'll take a peek below. I think we have some resources you guys can check out for NICU Awareness Month. Yeah. And um, thanks for chatting today. Thank you. Right. Thanks to everybody who um, takes care of NICU babies. Absolutely. And makes it through that because, wow. Yeah. <laughs>